this is IBM Museum. And I'm in front of that 41 serial port machine still. But since this is the month of December, I want to have a video showing how DOS can see those ports. And of course, it doesn't see these 41 ports that are configured onto this system. I mean, there's drivers under DOS that make those accessible. They can be programmed. Uh, but I'll show the basics of the four ports is all that, that DOS can basically see of the um, addresses that serial ports are on under, a, under its convention. So the let's get switched over to the the DOS on this machine and I do have I mean we see the the IO port addresses for the that quadrant driver under DOS but I also have the UNPC program installed on the system and it, you know I, of course I've got it on that zip disk now that I easily put it on there but I, I already had that in place months ago who knows when in the past I went and put it on the system and I'll start by showing that and then I'll also show the the DOS debug angle as well so we'll go ahead and start up the UNPC program and we will go to the system information. I want to pull up the, the BIOS data first because we'll look at that under the DOS debug. It shows the address, um, RAM memory contents are, segment. There's uh, locations that it shows the, the ports and parallel ports that are on um, at those addresses. And of course it's detecting four of the ports the ones that are arranged in a conventional I.O. on the system. Um, in fact, let me get rid of my webcam picture just for a moment just so I show the entire screen here and we'll look at this under DOS debug in a moment and the UNPC program of course a little bit more than the than um, the system information tool does go through and let's look at serial ports first and it gives beyond the, okay, crash. <laughs> um, let's see if we can run the, run that just on its own. When I did a preliminary um, run of this content before, it was fine. I don't know why it's going through and wanting to crash on me now. Yeah, it is. And then it's funny that it's not able to find that file. Okay, so let's look at this. Let's go through, I'm gonna go over to the D drive, that zip drive, and it's good I still have that, that disk in place. We're gonna see if we can just run the UNPC from that. 
because that should have all the just just to be something different different way of accessing it okay and I'm certain I, I ran it from the the hard drives before but this shows those addresses and if it detects the the serial ports they're they're shown in this order as it is for are used in um, uh, this convention that 03F8 is you know treated as COM1 if it's detected it um, it's the primary serial port and of course um, years ago a lot of people ran serial mice and uh, modems and a modem has an internal UART to it as well a, a serial port um, and they would have uh, going through and speaking of crashes they they would move the mouse and the the uh, it would disconnect them from being online uh, it was typically how you had your your serial port set up and you typically had to use the dial-up modems you want to put them on COM2 and COM4 for a uh, higher priority interrupt rather than uh, for the, your serial mice. You put those on uh, COM1 and COM3 so they were a lower priority interrupt and would not go through um, the, the dial-up connection over that modem would, uh, would uh, be treated as the... As the um, the first or higher priority interrupt. So you, you, moving your mouse uh, had less effect in that case to go through and disconnect um, you from being online. And aren't you glad that we're in so much more of a modern world now um, for um, not having uh, effectively ser serial mice. I mean, we have USB mice um, or mice that are through a Bluetooth connection and things like that now. Now for the parallel port aspect, as we saw just a moment ago, the um, and and this being uh, IBM usually goes through on this where they they have the 03BC IO address and 03BC hex of course. Um, and that was the original parallel port of the monochrome display. It had a uh, connection for the monochrome display and then a, a parallel port on that adapter. And 03BC was, was the IO address of that port. Uh, you'll see otherwise, you'll typically see uh, LPT1 on, in more conventionally on at the address of 0378 hex and then LPT2 at 0278 hex. And I don't have more than just that one parallel port uh, on the system. And it, what's marking for number four is that likely extended BIOS data area segment. That sees to where it goes through and it has that um, for the last word of that of those blocks where it shows the uh, serial and parallel ports marks the extended uh, BIOS data area uh, segment in that location. And I'll show you in a moment what I'm, what I'm referring to as we go through. And clearly, we can go back to our C drive, get in our root directory even though we don't have to. And starting the DOS debug command, we will say dump, and we're going to give it an address. I'm going to go through, and I'll just write out this in long, more in longhand. <coughs> and I'm going to go through, and I'm going to do a length of. F, which should be the entire line of information. And the, the symbol I have before the F, it's a length. So it, it, I could type it as a capital would be a little bit more evident. And we see here for the, 
let me make sure that, in fact, I may want to mark that as a, I'm in the wrong, I'm in the wrong uh, segment. I'm going to do actually I want to do as this length. Let's do that as a I want to make sure Let's see, one, two, three. I'm going to do it as a length one zero for the entire line. Okay. And there we have the, the correct <laughs> information. Get in the right area. And just in trying to put it as longhand, I, I messed up the address. And so we show from that there's that 03 f8 and again it's that it's the byte order in the word these are the effectively the eight words across the 03 f8 02 f8 03 e8 and 02 e8 for the serial ports then after the dash we go to that fifth word of the 03 bc that is that effectively that first parallel port, LPT1, and then 0000, zero, zero, zero in the two following words uh, for the, uh, just because there's no parallel port that is detected under DOS on the system, and then that the last word of that, that 9FC0, is the extended BIOS data area. So we could effectively do the uh, dump command. Of a length. And we'd go through and do. Length E. You could say let's put that L for length. Capital letters that becomes easier to, do, to show. And then length E is two bytes or one word shorter of the information that we're displaying. And that's all of the serial and parallel parts detected under DOS. And we'll do a queue for quitting DOS debug. I'll go back and bring up, in fact, I can go through, I'll shift this to the camcorder view and I just want to show one of the books I have I had an earlier book um, this one even looks a little, a little worn out as well at one point I must have replaced this because I have not even pulled out the uh, the diskette that she included this is by uh, Jan Axelson and she has done uh, quite a bit as it shows here also for the and it's kind of funny for this being December um, you know she the main um, areas that she covers is uh, the Windows aspect in programming in Visual Basic and that'll make it into effectively um, program as detecting that but she has, you know, this last uh, section. She has accessing ports under DOS because we're again we're in DOS Simber, and um, you know maybe a page and a quarter of that of of how to go through and access supports. Um, and she talks about a little bit about the Quick Basic and and the abbreviated version of QBasic under DOS, and then. Um, the Visual Basic for DOS in that section. And that would go into my my DOS version of the update of the of the SIT um, program. So stumbling aside, um, UNPC um, going through and for whatever reason crashing on that aspect of uh, 
uh, as I go through and try and show the serial ports on the on the system and honest it worked before I kind of did a quick run through and um, it ran before but I was glad I had that that zip drive on the system and still even had that disk in the drive just as a way to test it and make sure that I had the files copied uh, between them and um, so it all worked out in the end. I was prepared without uh, necessarily even thinking of that angle. So if you like that preparation, you enjoy how I uh, responded to that and just kept it going, what's an all unedited video. You know, that's the way you're going to see my videos is just warts and all for the way I kick them out. Go ahead and click on that like button and comment. I asked uh, a little bit of a round of how many serial ports have people seen on PCs? And this being one of those instances that um, this has got a whole bunch of serial ports on this system. Just one parallel port, but a bunch of... Um, Serial ports, although, you know, DOS, for the purposes of DOS, I showed um, conventional DOS without any other drivers, recognizing uh, the, those four conventional ports. Uh, DOS, even on a microchannel system. Microchannel is a little bit different. They have normally eight conventional I.O. addresses that serial ports can be on. And uh, they didn't expand the parallel port aspect anymore. But they did for the beyond three um, that you see under DOS. But they did go through, in addition to the four conventional addresses that an 8-bit or an ISA bus system has, there are four additional ports that Microchannel has for what they view as a conventional serial port addresses that can be on those machines, just expanding those uh, the serial connections and I will get into the aspect of showing other multi-port um, adapters under the microchannel interface I do have and I have a bunch of those boards the so-called Arctic boards and um, uh, multi-ports even with the coprocessor on board uh, for controlling those aspects I have a bunch of those boards a lot of different types and typically um, just up to eight ports per adapter and I am aware that there are there are adapters out there that were of course rather expensive at the time and still are that go through and um, even multiplex more serial ports on there and tip and sometimes they get up to even effectively 64 ports being able to be accessed from one adapter being on the system and, and going through. Uh, Digi is a very common name uh, company uh, in that aspect that has done those. And I do have other Digi uh, microchannel boards that I'll show in later videos. But I thought this is informative enough for the way that I have this system set up and we get to do a little bit of reflection on how DOS sees those uh, serial ports and parallel ports. Um, so I hope this this is informative. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. I recommend it to your friends that are interested in this sort of content so I can get more subscribers. But that's all I have for now. This is IBM Museum. Thank you.